What is going on, everybody? Riddles here, back again. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. This is the Riddle Me This podcast, and I want to thank everyone once again who has subscribed and supported this channel. Um, if you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe below and turn on the bell for all notifications so you will be notified when I upload content to this channel. This is episode number 13, lucky number 13, of the Riddle Me This podcast. I hope that everybody is having a great day and a great week so far. I am trying my best. Um, a lot of things have been going on lately that... Uh, really been messing with my head, but, you know, I mean, it is what it is, just trying to focus on other things, um, and today, uh, I have for you, um, my thoughts and a review on AMB's new album, Muerte, uh, Axe Murder Boys, uh, new album on Magic Ninja Entertainment which was just released a few days ago. Um, before we get into uh, my thoughts and the review on this album, I want to go over uh, a couple things real quick. Um, as always, check the links in the description below, all my social media. Uh, give my Facebook page a like. You can follow me on Twitter at Little Juggalo. Um, Instagram, Snapchat, etc. Um, I'm also on PlayStation 4. You can send me a friend request there. Uh, my business email uh, for uh, all business related things, questions, comments, concerns uh, relating to the channel. Um, you can uh, send me an email on that email and I'll get back to you. Mm, excuse me. As soon as I can, I try to stay. Um, I try to stay on top of those things. Um, I'll get back to you as quickly as I possibly can. Also, the previous video um, that I just uploaded a few days ago of my homie Ox Soprano of the Black Bill Clintons, I am giving away for free, 100% legit, absolutely free, a copy of his solo album, Adapt or Perish, uh, which features uh, Insane Lope and also uh, Damien Quinn of Dark Half, Critical Snuff Production, um, as well as some other artists from the Black Bill Clinton uh, camp. So, um, all, all you have to do, and I'll link the video in the description below so that you can go to it if you haven't seen it and you want to participate in this contest, all you have to do is watch the video and follow the instructions in the video. And when you're, when you've done all that, all you have to do is comment done. D-O-N-E in the comments and you are automatically entered into the drawing. Uh, this will end at midnight on Wednesday. So that'll end midnight on Wednesday and then Thursday morning sometime I'm going to come on here and I'm going to do the drawing for uh, the free CD. So go and check that out if you want to participate. This is a great album to have, it really is. Um, so, go and check that out um, and uh, participate in that contest. Also, real quick, shout out to Lord Sin. Yeah, while we're on the subject of the Black Bill Clintons, who uh, is one of my favorite underground groups um, at, at this moment in time, um, Lord Sin of the Black Bill Clintons 
uh, in his most recent um, so uh, solo um, EP called the Crime Scene EP, uh, which is on his personal band camp. I will link that in the description below. It's got all of his uh, solo material on there as well. Um, go and check that out. It's like a five dollar, uh, like a five dollar uh, digital download. Four songs. That is just an EP. Um, so I'm I'm really digging this EP. Uh, Lord Sin kind of has, for me, my opinion personally. He he kind of has this. Uh, Biggie and Method Man uh, kind of voice. Uh, just Biggie's voice and Method Man's voice just in one. And it just it, it just flows perfectly. And I love what he does. Um, and, you know, it's, it's only four songs and it's a short EP. Like most, uh, you know, EPs are, of course, but the the beats, the production, the sound of his voice and his flow, it's absolutely fucking incredible, and I highly recommend that you go and check out this EP as well as his other solo material that he has on his band camp. Go and check that out. That is linked in the description below as well. Now, let's get into um, the actual main events of today's podcast, uh, and that is A&B, Axe Murder Boys, brand new album, Muerte, which was uh, just released a few days ago on Magic Ninja Entertainment. Um, first off, I, I want to I get this out of the way. The the whole thing about um, the actual physical copies uh, being CDRs. Um, now, at, at first, I only saw this on Facebook. Uh, you know, friends of mine, um, you know, getting the physical copy of the CD and then, you know, looking at it upon further inspection, finding out it is a CDR. Um, and, uh, as a matter of fact, a local homie of mine, uh, who's a big A&B guy, um, actually, uh, pre-ordered the physical copy of the CD as well, and when he got his, um, he, he actually sent me a video clip, I, I don't have it in front of me right now, but he sent me a video clip of him taking the CD out. And, you know, looking at it and saying, this, this is a fucking CDR. And then he looked at the front of the, of the disc, you know, where the artwork is on the front of the disc. And he, uh, he could literally take his thumbnail and just start peeling back the, the artwork on the front of the disc. It was like a sticker. Um, so... You know, th this is my thing. Yeah, sure, it's it's a cheap and less expensive way to get your product out there. I completely, totally understand that part. Um, you know, even for an artist who's completely doing it on their own independently, no record labels behind them, no distribution, they're doing it on their own, you know, for an artist like that, that's just doing it all by themselves on their own, I, I can understand that as well. It's cheaper, it's less expensive, uh, and it's it, it can be a quicker process. I get that. But, in this case, this is Axe Murder Boys. This is fucking Young Wicked and Bones Dub. Two guys who have been in the game doing this since they were fucking teenagers. Okay? Yeah, 
and, you know, formerly on Psychopathic Records. Now they are on Magic Ninja Entertainment, which is owned and ran by Twisted, Monoxide, and Jamie Madrox, okay? You guys are fucking Magic Ninja Entertainment. Twisted owns and runs this fucking record label. There is, <clears throat> excuse me, there is absolutely no, and I mean no fucking excuse to put out a product like that to your fans, to your consumers. At all. Period. You know, if if Magic Ninja doesn't care about the quality of the product that they are giving us, or even Psychopathic for that matter, or Strange Music, or LSP, whatever, it doesn't matter. If they don't care about the quality of the product that they are uh, presenting to their fans, to their consumers, to their customers, then why the fuck should we care? Honestly, seriously, it, it, it baffles my mind. I mean, I'm sitting there, I'm, I'm watching this homie of mine who's local, who, just, who literally lives like 10 minutes away from me up the street, and he's sending me this video, and he's peeling the sticker off of the front of the fucking CD, and it's a CDR. How cheap and how... Careless and lazy can you be? And, you know, you, for, for the longest time, this album was being pushed as one of the biggest albums on Magic Ninja to date. And the final product comes out, and it comes to people, and it's a fucking CDR. That, that baffles my mind. I, I don't understand... The thought process behind that, it's just, I can't fathom what the fuck they're thinking about that, but whatever, it is what it is, I didn't order the physical copy of the CD, so therefore I'm not personally worried about it, but still, as a fan, as a consumer, as a juggalo, who lives and breathes this music, lives and breathes the underground, and this is the product that you present to your fans, to the Juggalos, that's, that's fucked up, that's, that's not cool, but anyways, that's, that's my rant on that, but the album itself, Okay, there was only, uh, see, there was only one guest appearance, and that was with Twisted themselves. Um, 13 tracks. Uh, Axe Murder Boys, Muerte, was a good album. Was it great? No. Uh, was it a five-star classic album? No. Could it have been better? Yes. Um, now, there there were some good things about this album. I will say this first and foremost. I've I've never I had never really heard of Axe Murder Boys until they got signed to Psychopathic. I had heard one Axe Murder Boys song before they got signed to Psychopathic. And that was Dream off of The Unforgiven Forest. And The Unforgiven Forest, that was an album that spread through the underground like wildfire. Okay. So, when they got signed to Psychopathic, that was my first real full taste of A&B and what they could do. And then I went back and I listened to their prior material, and they instantly became one of my favorite groups. Um, and this album, for me personally, kind of takes me back to those days of 
of their older material when they were first starting out. Um, they they just have this hunger and this determination in the sound and the quality of the music on this album. Uh, was digging a lot of I I was digging a lot of the beats on this album and the way things were structured and the way things were put together. However, a lot of this album for me personally sounded very rushed, very generic sounding, uh, nothing, nothing groundbreaking, nothing new from A and B. Um, you know, I, I I will say this: Young Wicked is fucking great at what he does. Um, I love his voice. I, I love his flow. Um, you know, he can. You know, he can give you a slow melodic flow, and other times he can, you know, fucking chop it up with the best of them. Bones Dub. I I don't know why, but Bones Dub. When I listen to him and I listen to his voice, he reminds me of old school Bone Thugs and Harmony. I, I don't know why, maybe it's just me, but he reminds me of old school Bone Thugs and Harmony. So, you know, their their talent isn't really the issue here. It's the fact that they are talented and, you know, this album just really didn't hit on much for me except for a few songs. Um, this is not necessarily an album that I'm going to go out of my way to put on every single day and just bump like crazy. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, that's just me, that's my opinion on this album. If you think differently, that's fine, that's great. That's, that's you, but it's just not for me, in, you know, in that sense. Um, however, um, going with the things that I did like on this album, uh, the second track, Who Wanna Die, uh, this, this, uh, this song right here reminded me, uh, so much of Honor off of Blood In, Blood Out, which was their debut album on Psychopathic, uh, and that was the last track on that album, uh, it just... I don't, to me, it just kind of went with the same flow, the same premise of that song on Blood In, Blood Out. I like that one. It was a great way to open the album. Um, Death Song was pretty good. Uh, for the crew, I like that one. I like the beat on that one. That was the big thing there. Um, FTB2. Um, I, I like that one. That was kind of a um, you know, kind of a, a big fuck you to, you know, all the scandalous bitches and hoes out there. We've all had a few, uh, I know that I have, and I'm sure that most of you out there listening have had the same as well. So, I, I like that song, um, Fuck em All was good, Vibe, uh, I've I, re I was really digging that song. That caught my eye. Um, the video was actually good, too. If you haven't seen the video, I'll link that in the description uh, below as well so you can check that out. That was a great video. Um, and the song uh, Low Life, the very last track with Twisted. Um, I and you, and, you know, this is another thing with me. You know, I I don't I don't particularly particularly like an album that's loaded down with guest appearances. Um, you know, you you go back now, like when I was younger, uh, No Limit Records was a big deal. Um, you know, Master P and Silk the Shocker and Sea Murder and all that, and you know they're their albums, you know, they were always loaded down with guest appearances. You know, whether it be artists from other labels or just artists on No Limit. And it was mostly artists from No Limit. Um, 
but you know back then it was okay i guess um but the the older i got and more i matured i just i, I kind of got out of that i don't i i don't really like an album that's just loaded down with guest appearances um so it, it was cool and it was refreshing to only see that one guest appearance on this album um and it was the very last track the twisted uh so low life the very last track on the album i love that one um but you know like i said all in all except for those few things um this album for me personally really didn't hit on much um you know i think i think for me personally uh I just overhyped this, you know, I, I was really looking forward to it, and then when it was finally released, you know, I just wasn't, I just wasn't that impressed, and, you know, I, 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 I don't know really what else to say, or why, you know, we're not getting the quality of music and entertainment that A and B can bring and provide um, in their music. Um, you know, uh, you might have a different opinion on it, but for me personally, Muerte just really didn't hit on much for me. Um, you know, still, like I said, a few good songs, some good beats, some good production. And, you know, it took me back to the days of, you know, their older material before they got signed to Psychopathic and eventually to Magic Ninja. Um, you know, just this hunger and determination about them uh, in the music. But ultimately, in the end, it just fell short for me. Um, but, again, I'm not taking away from their talent and who they are, just this album could have been so much better and so much more, in my opinion. So that's that's my thoughts on it. Um, my whole thoughts on the the actual physical physical copies of the album being CDRs, which is fucking ridiculous. That's bullshit. And you know, a company like Magic Ninja and people running it like Twisted should fucking know better. Um, but if what's done is done, you know, it's already happened, so you know, final product has already been put out and sent out to people. So it, it, it is what it is. Uh, hopefully they'll learn from their mistakes. Um, it would have to be. So that's it for now, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. I am Riddles. This has been the, the Riddle Me This podcast, episode number 13. Go and check out Lord Sin and the Crime Scene EP. I'll link uh, his band camp in the description below where you can stream the album and you can purchase it for it's like $5 um, as well as the rest of his material. Also check out uh, my Op Soprano Adapter Parish CD giveaway. Um, which will end on Wednesday at midnight, and then I'm going to do the drawing on Thursday of sometime that morning or in the afternoon. So keep a lookout for that. Um, and like I said at the beginning of the video, check out all my social media, give all that a like, a follow, whatever. Um, and that is it for this episode of the Riddle Me This Podcast. So next time, I'm Riddles. Peace out. Take care. Have a great week. And I'll be back with more content soon on this channel. So stay tuned. Talk to you later.